Colon, welcome to our podcast, Cozy Conversations with the Sister Project. I'm Lauren. And I'm Michelle. And we're so excited you stopped by for a visit. Come on in. Yeah, make yourself at home. We're two Midwestern sisters who love a good old-fashioned conversation and enjoy sharing our life experiences with one another and you. Consider this your one-stop shop for cozy, mindful well-being, along with some entertainment and lots of wheezy laughing. Oh, you bet there'll be a lot of that going around. (laughs) Our goal is to live our coziest life and inspire you to do the same because the truth is, we think it's good for your mind and your body. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, let's get cozy. Well, hi there. Hello and welcome to Cozy Conversations with the Sister Project. I am your host, Lauren, being joined by my co-host and sister from the same mister, yep, Michelle. Here, here is always. What up? Welcome. Good morning. It Good is a morning. really fall morning here in the Finally. city of Chicago and neighboring suburbs. The Loving temperature it. has dropped. There's some rain. It's a cloudy day. It's a soup day, you guys. And so it is get that soup, soup and, on the stove. And have you noticed too, even Ryan, like he said, he looked outside. He's like, I feel like in a day, the leaves have gone from like where they uh-huh. were to vibrant starting, hues and really yep. starting to turn. They're starting to turn. Mm. Michelle, we have some uh, some minimal housekeeping yes. uh, about uh, pickleball and the pigs. The yes, two a little, few announcements, friends. Um, Net Game TSP Pickle League start this We're so week. so excited. Super excited. I was at Net Game yesterday. I just freaking love hanging out there and playing pickle. I'm kind of getting settled in and just excited for everybody um, new to pickle and, tomorrow. and not. Or yeah. no, not tomorrow, you guys. Well, well tomorrow, it, our time. Doesn't but matter. Doesn't matter. But and then I can't wait. It's going to be, oh yeah, Lauren. Oh my God. I forgot you're coming in for this. Jesus yes. Christ. You're going to have a blast. I just freaking love this place. Um, And then uh, October 26th, the pigs are playing at the Elm, eight o'clock. You don't need a reservation if you're looking to listen to some live music or what I like to call taking a hit off of a good vibes bomb. Mm. That's what the Brent pigs bring you. Um, see you there. On the 26th of October. So that's yes. next Saturday. Yes, ma'am. Um, question. We've had some um, listeners and followers write in asking if children can come. It's not a bar, so children can come. No, I mean, people, yeah, kids can come. I just, yeah. there's just, they don't. You know, no, got but it. Totally, yeah. They yeah, can, but, they but they can. it's not. Yeah, okay. It's a restaurant. Awesome. So they're welcome. You yeah. are welcome to come and dine and have food and do whatever and listen to the pigs. Well, there you have it, folks. All right. So leading us into our cozy convo for today, we're doing our catch up. And then hot topic for today is boo baskets. Do you boo or do you boo the boo baskets? Do you poo poo or boo? Do you poo poo the boo or do you do the boo? <laughs> And we want to hear from you guys. So write in and let us know. Um, contact at the sisterprojectblog.com. And soon enough, our new website will be up and running in just probably days now. And you guys, there's a button where you can like literally leave us a message Can't on wait. there. It's going to be so freaking right. awesome. Best friends, All right, you totally guys, connected. We hope y'all are having a wonderful fall. Keep the spooky season alive and stay cozy. Enjoy the episode. Today, we're doing an earlier recording because I have my mammogram at nine-ish today. Mm-hmm. And I just want to show you my fucking new That's so cute. mug. It's Charlie Brown. That's adorable. Um, Kitsia Luna's Stop nanny it. made pizzole yesterday for our family. And it was, it's one of the best soups I've ever had in my life. Mm. If you're not familiar with pizzole, so it's, this one is pork-based. It's really red. It, there's green and a red. Hers is, she uses a certain pepper or chili to mm-hmm. make it red. So she does the Chile red one. Is what we're going to say Chile, while we're talking about this. Excuse me, Chile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, my favorite part of it is the hominy, which is yes. like those big ass like corn things. But she also delivered upon with all of the garnishes. And we're talking, <clears throat> are you ready? What? Like shredded lettuce chopped up radish, red onion, and oregano. And I need to tell you, I ate two huge bowls around oh 10 o'clock God. last night. Oh my God. Which probably oh isn't faring well for my tummy, but whatever. We're it doesn't matter. About- when somebody delivers homemade goodness to your doorstep, you take it down. Well, we're going to, that's a funny thing you say, because we're going to get into um, doorstep presents mm-hmm. and things like that in just a moment. But I think mm-hmm. we should catch up first, Michelle. Um, 
you know, it's just the season, spooky season is here. I feel like we're all trying to take advantage of this time with, you know, whether yourself yes, or your being loved in the moment. ones, yes. being in the moment. And I see in the notes here, and I'm <clears throat> jealous because you guys went to Bankston's, which is where I got, we did. I was asked to be married in the pumpkin patch. It, of it's, it's a perfect story. And William was there. That is so. William was there. Dad, with dad. Brought William, it's so cute. Yeah, couple, we need to talk to Will about this. I know. Just, like, I don't does even he know even if he remember knows. this? And Dad took him when he was like maybe little, three. Little. Yeah, so cute. Um, but you now are going with your teens, and it sounds like the best fall fest ever. It's, it's honestly. I, just thinking about it makes me happy. <laughs> it's they, fun. Um, well, because I like Lauren, I think about like taking my kids, you know, we do all the things with our little, you're in it right now. You're experiencing these, these, these moments, these, these fall, you know. Oh, um, it's so different jubilee. than yours, but it's fun. It's so fun. It's so fun. It is a different kind of fun with my teenagers. Oh, I can't imagine. And, and they're like, get us, call, call Nene we're going to Bankston's and we're doing everything. And I'm like, and then as we're like driving there, you know, we've got like scary music on in the car. Like we roll up, yeah. there's a line. We're there before it opens. There's a line, but we don't care because we're at Bankston's. Because the Disney of you the guys Midwest. Are the National Lampoons when Clark Griswold drives up to the, but at dorks. least Bankston's is open. Literally Unlike the movie. Dorks. Now, $77 just to walk in the door for a family of not three. Cheap. It's not, not cheap. cheap. And it's again, not cheap. But you know what? what? That for us is our special thing, and yeah. we and and that's we're good. You know, but it's we not get into the families in general, exactly. Because it, 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 do you have to buy ride tickets? No, like, do you, have buy, you have to buy oh. food and drink and beer. But it, so that you gets you on, on every the... ride in every experience. Okay, it's, I... a, it's a fucking fall free for all at Bankston's. If, okay, when you take it in the door, super clean. It's, it's literally, it is, the grounds are impeccable. They keep adding to it. The detail of the, the farms and the egg drop new, it's just, the, the drop, guys, yep, there's, a, there's a new, well, it's a farm. So the ride <laughs> is like an egg that goes up a pole and then it like bops down and the kids are sitting in eggs. So you have the kids and okay, they're like, we're egg dropping, acting, <laughs> dorking. Sounds like ovulation or it's, your yeah. menstrual period. <laughs> yes. Their follicular cycle has maxed out. They're literally Their coming egg out. Is dropping. Now that's so cute because I love this for teenagers. I think with Luna 70, just not even forget the price, just the, the experience. Would she have fun? Sure. But like, you know what I've been doing with Luna and we've been having a blast. That's I put her in the car and I say, Hey Luna, you want to go see some Halloween? You want to go see Halloween? And she's like, yeah, Halloween. And then we get in the car <laughs> Pumpkin. We get in the car and I take her to different neighborhoods because Chicago brings it. Yeah, and they Chicago decorate. brings it. And I bring her and her favorite thing to do is to sit on the porch steps that are adorned with pumpkins. She sits and she poses for a photo. Stop it. I'm cat photos. Stop it's it the right. cutest thing ever. Stop it right so now. So that's been a fun way. And I will say, I love the idea of Bingston's. Like I said, you get, your kids are having fun. People are having a blast. But I've been searching and it's not easy to come by a, just a full on pumpkin patch. You pick pumpkin patch where you bring a wagon and you walk into the fields and you pick your fucking pumpkin and you can't find those. Anymore. You got to drive out for that. You got to drive out. out of I'm town gonna, I that. might do it. Like I really, that's it, that I did that a couple of years ago and it was phenomenal. Mm, and it was, that's like, to me, like the, that's like the essence of the season. I is loved that, it. Is that right there? Did you know that most of the pumpkins that are, where are they coming in from? Store, they're coming from farms in Illinois. They are? That Across makes the country. me happy. I know. We are like the farm, we are the pumpkin We're the farm We're the leading farm capital. producer? Yes, of pumpkins. Oh my God. Shout out Illinois for bringing that. I well, love that little sense. tidbit. No wonder why we're so like hardcore pumpkin people. I mean, we've got them coming out of our ears. We really, really do. Literally. And then, and then Sunday, you know, before our family gathered, I hosted a chili chili night for the family. I'm never going to make cornbread muffins again. Not, not ate one. Them, huh? No, not one. I got honey butter from the farmer's market just for mm. it. That's okay. Never going to make those again. Those were not a winner. 
You know what? I think honestly, let's talk about this because we, you and I always are on the phone, like before an event and we kind of like break down what we're bringing. And we do have this thing we both have. I mean, everybody kind of has it and it might be more an an Italian thing. It's this like, like attack in your mind that you're not going to have enough food. So you haphazardly then start to patch in with things and you never really need them. No, there was no need for the... I thought the cornbread muffin just went nicely with the chili. It was a great added touch. But no one ate it. But I will tell you, Michelle gave me a great recommendation, which was to use the McCormick chili seasoning and the recipe on the back. And I did just that. And it was gone by the end of the night. Yup. So, and I did all the toppings you see. So it's like, it's like your basic go-to chili. It's nothing technically special. I'm not like roasting, you know, tenderloin and then, you know, chopping it up and you're doing providing, special things. You're providing a meal for your family. It was family. so fun. And, and it was like a chili was, mac. Yeah, exactly. Because we did diddlini pasta and I did all of the toppings. Um, and I will say one of the biggest um, uh, fan favorites was the gigantic Bavarian pretzel from Mm. the LaGrange Farmer's Market. Hear me now, folks. If you are local, there is a bread vendor and they make huge ass pretzels. I I got two. You really only need one. Only need one. You really Mm do. I really, I, you know, you never know because there's a lot of men in our family too. So I'm like, these hogs are going to get after and they liked it, but people would take a bite, walk around and real dark, brown yeah they were pretzel. carrying that bright that longer piece of the dark brown pretzel <laughs> around periodically i was like what are you holding there oh it's a pretzel and if you want to take that lip pretzel to the next level and this is like a total rip off of this place called standard market in our town which is a great idea awesome idea where they take you can go there and pick up or make it yourself the the giant bavarian pretzel and then they just load the middle of it with like dipping sauces and cheese and meats and fruit nuts. and nuts and cookies okay, so like make literally a charcuterie play out of it a char and it just holds it basically and then people eat it as the night goes on it's really cute and if you get the i i, I did it so you, i can tell you it works if you buy the bavarian pretzel fresh on thursday at the farmer's market you pop it right into the fr- freezer and you take it out an hour before your guests come. And honestly, it dethaws really perfectly, mm. but pop it in the oven for 10 minutes at 350 and it's chef's kiss. Hot tip. Okay. Hot tip. And then some, what, Keats Kurtz beer cheese? Yeah. Kurt, Mertz? That one? Mertz? Mertz beer cheese? Was it the and one the dad used to get when we were kids? Yes. Yeah. I was really tempted to get the port wine one, but I wasn't mm. sure if people would like it as much, but next time I'm going That's to good. do that. That's a good one. Um, But that was great having the whole family over. And before that, we took our little family down the block to go watch the Chicago Marathon, which is a highlight of the autumn season. If you live in the city of Chicago, it's one of the best events that takes place. It really is. It really is. So it's the Bank of America um, Marathon and... We are at mile 18. So Taylor Street's mile 18. Are and people, are we getting bleeding nipples at this point or what? No, are I was looking for them. I didn't yeah. see any bloody That's nipples. Sad. But you know, you, you see people who are like, their head is there and they're in it. Some people are walking and, you know, I really try to give my cheer to the people that don't have like their uh, earbuds in because they, and the ones that are walking, I'm like, and I, my thing is I keep my like cheers, like you are a badass. Keep yeah. Keep going. You yeah. got this. And then I get a lump in my throat and I'm getting teary eyed. I'm, t- I'm getting teary eyed talking about it right now. And there's something very emotional about cheering on runners. And so I took to the Instagram and I asked our Instagram fam, our whiffs, I'm like, does anyone else get like emotional? Yeah, and the response is everyone. like, did you see the responses? Our friend Jenny Kaufman was like, oh, I cried all day yesterday. Oh my God. I know it is so moving and inspiring. It really and is some, moving. Yeah. And someone wrote, it is, someone wrote something to us like, you know why? It's because we're all just coming together to cheer a bunch of humans on. We're not crying because something bad has happened. We're not trying to like save one another. It's just, it's just humans coming together to cheer people on in good spirit and seeing what the human body is capable of is also tear worthy. I mean, these people from like, you know, all different, you know, ages and sizes. And what really gets me 
are the old folks. Mm-hmm. The, the oldies run in and I'm like, dude, this has got to be this guy's like 50th marathon. Yeah, and I'm he's like, just what are you doing? Jogging along. It's unbelievable. I just, my God, those knees afterwards wrapped me in one of Did those silver one? blankets. No, but I, I hopped in for like a few miles with a friend that did one when we were in our tw- 20s, probably. Oh, so and different, it was, different story, different time. Yeah, different story, different time. And I was yeah. like three miles. I'm like, you guys, I'm yeah, like, here. I'm get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> um, we were at the corner of the, the Taylor Street Tap, which is a cool little bar right at the corner of our house. We don't, we rarely go there, but we stopped in for a beer while, you know, we were just sitting there. They had a cool blues grass, like Fun. band playing. It was great. Luna loved it. And as we're sitting there, Captain America and Superman yeah. hop out of the marathon All the and characters come in coming out. for a beer, mm-hmm. chug a beer, take a selfie, and go back to running. <laughs> Sean, Kid you not. Wait. Captain America had the shield. They were running dressed as Superman and Captain wait, I America. Love that. that that makes my that is what would that's a good vibe song hit. In, they took a selfie. These guys were probably 45, 50, 50, took a selfie, cheers, chugged. Ran. And then the funniest part is watching Superman get back into the marathon because his cape is flowing. So he's, you know, he's got his beard and he's just going. So well done. If anyone ran, you are a badass. If you have run a marathon, it's one of my favorite things of the uh, of the season. I love the music. I love like the music themed with like running, mm-hmm. you know, like the word was always that or yeah. like, you know, just that made me laugh. The, the, the volunteers are, are amazing too. Yeah. The volunteers, they're sweeping up all the cups. And then back to my friend, Jenny Kay, she was watching, it looked like she was watching from like a, maybe, I don't know, brownstone, like a, an apartment up high. And she had a yeah. video of a woman, she said for four hours, who volunteer, who was just dancing and cheering on, cheering on the, the runners. Awesome. So she was working hard. She was working hard. Um, Michelle, you also, you know, we're going to talk about, we both had a little fun Friday. You went to Posto 31, shout out to Posto 31 in LaGrange Park. Shout out to Posto 31 in LaGrange Park and the new edition of Sausage and Peppers on the menu. It was absolutely the best. Okay, why did it make it so special? Because we've had this meal many no, times. No, I because first of all, it was the the thin barese sausage. I'm Michelle, sorry. I thought our family didn't like the barese the barese sausage. I thought we don't like no, the skinny. No, we sausage. don't like the shape of it. Okay, it's long and skinny. Yeah, it's That's something to be why. deterred from. Okay, long and skinny wieners. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about sausage, <laughs> and. The, this the sausage is like it comes out in the coil. The only place I've ever had sausage I, it served on a coil is in my own family's Wait, house. They serve it in a coil. Yes, it's like long and like still like it's they kind of like keep it in its shape, yes. you know. And it's on a bed of like petite cut roasted potatoes and green okay, this peppers really good. that are crispy with a like dark brown almost not a gravy like in like an au jus, au jus mm, yep. almost it's probably taken from all of that beautiful meat and peppers it is a 10 when i tell you it is a 10 it is one of the best dishes wow. i've had in lagrange area in a while. Well, post the 31, I got news for you. You better yeah. go get some sausage sausage links because yeah. uh, you're going to have some customers. Oh, it's that so sounds good. so good. And what a nice fall meal. Oh, so And it was cozy. great. And we sat around my girl. It was my me and a couple of friends and we we were going to sit outside and we looked outside and the the umbrellas were blowing sideways and it was a Friday night and Posto is slammed. Like you have to make a reservation. That's how good it is. And um, I'm like, I'm not eating outside. And we all looked and decided, do you want to just eat in the bar? And we did. We oh, I love eating at the bar. Wives here, husbands <clears throat> here. They talked, we talked, had a great time. The bar is sometimes the best place to eat. And just a little It's hot our tip. preference. It's yeah, our hot preference. Tip. I also love going to eat by myself when I have the opportunity to do that. Um, and I'll bring a book with me. And if you are eating by yourself, a lone diner, I like to call them. If you're a lone diner, you usually get very special treatment from oh, the tender because they're excited that you're here. They're they're also impressed percent. that you're eating by yourself. And sometimes they'll slip you an extra glass or put something on the house. It's just a real, you know, it's a vibe. 
It's a vibe. Agreed. Agreed. So now, while you I were... like to heckle the people behind the bar if I'm friends <laughs> with them. Like last night I was at a local establishment and I was like, get it together, Brian. <laughs> were you at, you were at Luca's. You're yelling at bartender Brian. Shout out to bartender Brian at Luca's. An equally amazing restaurant. They have, I have yet to have a better orchetti sausage and rapini than That's at so Luca's. It's, it's so my favorite good. pasta dish, you guys. And it's just... It's the best. It's, it's the best. my favorite pasta dish at Luca's. It is. And they have a really good mini, like a, a small, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's the one? Why can't I think of it? The one with the iceberg lettuce. Oh, with, yeah. Um, what's the name of this? I have no, I I'm have no idea. What <laughs> the fuck's wrong with me? Anyways, my brain, I'm literally thinking about something else, trying to talk about one I thing. I am brain dead, just for the record. Yeah, because Michelle was up late, you know, jamming with the pigs. Yeah. Brand, brain dead, just brain nothing dead. left to give. Well, let me keep going then because here, I've got a review for you guys. I know we usually do this when we are going over our reading, watching, listening to. But since we're talking about Friday, Anthony and I finally went to go see Beetlejuice. Mm. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I think they call it. And whatever, Beetlejuice 2. Um, Catherine O'Hara went on a rider. You know, the OGs, Michael Keaton. Yeah, and, yeah, give, me, um, give it to me. Give it it to was, me. I what? loved it. You loved Listen, it. There are some storylines that fell flat there. For instance, Tim Burton always injects, um, that's a wrong word, but his, no, it's fine. his wives or his partners into films. So, um, who's Monica, his wife? Monica Bellucci is his, okay. is his current partner. Do you know who Monica Bellucci yeah. is? She's stunning. Stunning. Absolutely. One of the most beautiful women on planet Earth. Um, but like her, 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 the, the storyline involving her just, was forced. That's the word I would use. It was forced. I mean, she was playing like Beetlejuice's ex-wife who died or whatever. So she comes back as like a Frankenstein kind of woman and she's like haunting him. It's it, And then she disappeared. It's just, it just doesn't. We didn't need it. I see we, what you're it, saying. We didn't need it. And there was another storyline in there that was a good storyline that they cut off early, probably to make room for Monica's storyline. So what is it worth seeing? Absolutely. Okay. It gives it gives the vibes. Um Jenna Ortega is her yeah. name, right? She was great. Anthony said she ran laps around Winona. You know, I'm a huge fan of Winona, Same. but she's not the best actress. She kind of plays herself, which is fine. But you're she, right. You know, I Winona and Lydia and Beetlejuice was kind of a mysterious little weird ghost hunter and kind of had an attitude. And in this version, she was kind of like timid and like, oh, oh, okay, whatever you guys say. And, and like, Winona is more, she has like a quieter, like kind of like meeker. She yeah. kind of played herself who she played at Stranger Things. Really? You know? But minus, like, but she was more, you know, she was Lydia. So, but Michael Keaton was fantastic. Because he's amazing, Annie. I sexy. love him. And he is sexy. He might have had a little nip and tuck at the face. I think he's had a little Nobody pull, but just... it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. It's fine. No, he okay. he's pretty tight. Okay. It's pretty he's tight. So what are you looking at over Great. there? I'm picking my finger now. I got to pick. Can you stop picking? I can't. Stop picking. Ooh, I because want As to. I'm trying to have a good you know, broadcast with my sister, she keeps looking down and it's hard to have a conversation with someone. Just okay. Really yeah, just put your fingers yeah. in your mouth so yeah. your yeah. eyes are matching my eyes. Okay. 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 All right. Guys, we are moving into our hot topic. And let me just preface this with, I've never heard of this before until I was laying in my bath soaking last night with my news app open. And I was like, I thought we were going to talk about maybe being sedentary and what sitting does. I'm like, oh, this is fucking boring. And then I came across Boo baskets. And the, the the title of the article from the cut was, and this got my attention right away, Boo Baskets are haunting parents. And I'm like, oh. great. It sounds like just another thing parents are expected to do to create magic for the yeah. holiday of Halloween. Well, I got news for you. The how the, the the magic of Halloween is uh, about ghosts and spirits and the veil thinning, okay, and costumes and candy and fucking jack-o'-lanterns. But now there's this thing called a boo basket. Now, Michelle, you are saying you've been booed because I yeah. think how a boo basket started was that neighbors would put a basket of Candy. Halloween fall goodies on your, your your stoop. And and then what would happen? And they like knock. It's almost like a ding dong ditch. They knock okay. and then they run. And so do you know who the boo basket is no. from? Did you ever find out? No. 
okay, so cute, funny, whatever, haha. But also Listen. like, and for us, it, this was not like, this did not like take over my little um, corner of the Midwest here. Like people weren't like, oh my God, it's boo basket season. What are we going to do? Oh, right, like I didn't people. know, it I didn't know if there was like major. a slip of paper in there that's like, okay, now you've got a boo. No, like, it's no, not like a chain letter of South boo Spring delivery. Street. No, yeah. no, no. Okay, so someone was just having fun with you and being cute. Okay, Correct. whatever. And that's kind of how this originated was this kind of like drop ding dong ditch. Here's some fun surprises. However, I dug deeper and this article explained further that it has taken on a life of its own. And when I tell you, I took the deep dive into TikTok and what people are doing now, now boo baskets are for your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your kids, your partner, teachers. Hang on a second. Boo. Shoot me. Fuck okay, off. continue on. Okay, so shoot me. There's there's TikToks of women demanding their boo basket from their boo. From their boo. So they, they want their boo to make them a boo basket. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Okay, yes. like how much more, how, how many more Stanleys? The, the, because the, Stanleys the are things. Huge. The things that people buy, we need to make start a movement. Okay, literally one of I one can't. lady posted how to boo basket on a budget, and she's in the dollar store. Time okay. out. First of all, Buying that's enough. Is enough. Crap. Buying crap. No, I'm Sign, a plastic pumpkin or a sign that says like "Live, Laugh, Boo." And, oh. I'm like, and she's like, "Oh, this is so cute." I'm like, "It's stupid. It's actually it's trash that you just shit paid with for. words written on it <laughs> is annoying. Yeah, it's garbage. It's you just literally garbage, the dumbest thing. And you're gonna throw it in a landfill. Thanks for nothing. Okay, so like, like, and then this one guy, like this one guy was making. He was showing, and he had almost. 300,000 views on this one, which really pissed me off because this just shows the shitty taste people have in wine. He's like, how to make your girlfriend the best boo basket ever. He puts an orange Stanley in there. First of all, who wants an orange Stanley? And by the Somebody way, if she's got an orange one, red, my yellow, point green, exactly. Blue, purple. My point exactly. Orange is like bottom of the bottom of the list color. She has yeah. every other color. Why? Why? Okay. A so collection of thing. Stanleys. That's And then... He's like, and there's nothing better than a in a boo basket than a bottle of wine. And you want to know what he put is in Is she pouring all of the wine into the Stanley? No, no. Oh, that I would just maybe be funny, but no. <laughs> he put in a bottle of barefoot wine. No. So that's about like six ninety nine and it's sugar, it's garbage, it's disgusting. I would actually break up with that person. That person's done. That person doesn't have a <laughs> date or a spouse or a partner or a hand job after nothing delivering that get out of here with your You're barefoot done. that would be such a red flag for i got red flags when it comes to like people done and that would be so You're i'm sorry i don't even drink wine really and that guy's out of here <laughs> I drank barefoot and yellowtail when we lived at on the Grange Chug, Road when Chug. I was also ripping cigs yeah. and then like with barf later. Okay. Yeah. Like barefoot wine. And this guy was like 40. Like, get out of here. You know? And so <laughs> this is, in my opinion, though, is now just asking people, A, to spend more money. And I got I got a news flash. I just sound like my mother. I got a news flash for y'all. I got back from Italy and I realized the cost of living. Yeah. In Italy, and I get it, I know people, well, you don't make as much money. Well, let me just say something. The cost of living in Italy compared to the United States of America is a fucking joke. Okay. Mm-hmm. Listen to me. Yesterday I took Luna and I, my thing, we like to also on after we go see Halloween, we stop for a coffee sometimes. For me to get a cortado, which is maybe two ounces, two and a half ounces, maybe three yeah. ounces at the most. Yeah. Okay. A little shooter glass. I got Luna a mini hot chocolate. And I'm talking, you guys, it's an espresso size cup. It's and a I got us a little pastry. You guys, yeah. you want to know how much money I spent? How Almost much? Three things. How much? $20. Yeah. And I'm not trying to sound like, oh, I'm, you know, but $20 for what, do, the little cup of milk I got her? $5. $5. It's, it's, that's how much a carton of milk cost. It's a fucking joke. It's you brutal. do the same thing in Italy, it costs you $7. Okay, so less than half the price. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I'll get off that soapbox. But we're asking people now to spend more money. Okay. And the fact of the matter that people are like, just go to the dollar store, just stop. 
Mm-hmm. Just it's garbage. Can we blow the dollar store off the planet? I mean, I don't mean to like it's, eradicate the company. I mean, but it's literally I walk through that place. Garbage, I walk man. through Costco and I'm like, I feel like I'm walking through a landfill. I look at everything oh, and all I see is so garbage. Intense. All I see is garbage. When I walk in the dollar dollar store, I just feel like I'm in a store filled it's with too garbage. Much. And because I'm like, get rid go. of it. Just get so rid of it. So you're asking people to spend more money. And then on top of it, which might make me even more annoyed, is you're asking parents and people to do, do more. Buy more and do more. here we go. Are we ready? It's because of dumb shit like social media yeah. where mom fluencers mm-hmm. have made boo boxes yeah. the new well, thing. Mo- yeah, so they monetize now that. Nancy's going to school. Sally got mm-hmm. a boo box. Because they're Nancy's keeping up with the Joneses. But then Nancy's now- my kid and mm-hmm. Nancy's going, well, I didn't get a boo box. And then yep. her and I have to mm-hmm. have a discussion after school and we got to mm-hmm. talk about how we do memories different mm-hmm. like you're you're going to remember going to the apple orchard and mm-hmm. shit like that and you're not going to remember the dumb shit i put in a boo box for you totally i mean maybe you will. Totally. i don't know but let me say no it. no i'm here to tell you that the 15 year olds that i have in this house the things that we talk about the highlight reels it's the memories and the experiences those are the things when i think of growing up and Halloween. One of my favorite memories of like this season, and I was all by myself. This is me being a weird loner kid. I'd be out in the front yard raking leaves and building them into, putting them in the pumpkin yep. bags. Do you remember so, those? The pumpkin bags with the yes. orange bag with the face with the triangle black in eyes. In fact, I think I'm going to go get some. We don't have a lot of leaves in front, but I think I'm going to mm. bring to the park where there's a lot of leaves and have you, Luna do you that will with be me. that lady. You will be that lady. I'm You're going to bring that garbage sweep up the- bag. You're going to sweep it up. Come on, Luna. Let's go sweep up the bag of the park. Um, the other memory is mom pulling out the Halloween basket that smelled yeah. like the inside of a plastic mask. Yeah. Okay. Better than we the inside that of a wooden smell. leg. Better than the Absolutely. inside of a wooden leg. And trick or treating where you would dump, you would see like a tsunami of candy fall out of your sack. Mm-hmm. And then I would pick out all the three musketeers and throw them, yeah, give them out of here. Throw, put them back uh-huh. in the basket for someone else. Mm-hmm. And those, and, or in the apple orchard with mom. Yeah. Picking apples and, and the fucking haunted house. Uh, come on. Amlings. Amlings haunted Amlings house. haunted house. We were terrified, but we also worshipped it. Hey, listen, you terrified got haunted. Worship. I'm going to haunted house this season. I'm, now, I'm, like, I'm hell bent on going to the one in Downers Grove. Now, I told the story of when I think last year when we took Mia to, I went with Mia to a haunted house in Michigan <laughs> with her soccer team. And the guy came out before we even went in and he, part of his character, or maybe it was just him, he hadn't brushed his teeth in about seven and a half years and he had thick layer of plaque okay. on his teeth and he smelled I'm like gonna, B.O. and okay. he was in her face and she looked at me and she goes, take me home. Okay. And so now we, the only thing, the, the it's a joke in our family. The only haunted house Mia can handle is the haunted house at Bankston's. She goes, this okay. is the top of my life. I'm <laughs> going to throw up. Scariest, most disgusting. And his like neck was out. He was acting there and also disgusting. Nothing grosser than B.O. and dirty teeth. Plaque from about three years of not brushing. Yep. So here's my message. That's a guys. childhood trauma for Mia. So I mean, just keep that in mind. <laughs> I won't bring that up. We won't be joking about that with her. That is, that seems serious. And I take that stuff. I don't take it lightly. You know, is it a little pack of stickers or something cute, whatever for your like little kid, whatever. I just, you know, they're on TikTok. People are putting PlayStation devices in okay. baskets. Well, these people, I mean, it's just, come on. it's just, it's for the gram. It's too much. And I just want to say to anyone listening out there, you don't have to do it. It's silly. It's mm-hmm. just not, you don't have to add that to the shit of things we need to do. 100%. I'm pretty sure you're probably making the Halloween season special enough by baking mm-hmm. that bread, having a pot of soup, yes. decorating the house. Like, let's. it's okay to go old school sometimes. Oh, Luna's totally. up there's Luna. Wait, she was she just, sleeping until she's now? She's been sleeping the whole time. She's, Holy she's been crap. sleeping until like That's eight amazing. Or That's amazing. You know what? Someone out there might be listening in and be like, listen, my kids love their boo boxes. Okay, fine. Add that to your list of things to do. No worries. But yeah. we're just saying. Yeah, and don't saying. come crying to us later when your bank account is empty because you spent all your money at the crap store filling it with filling up the boo boxes. I don't know. I guess growing up, the gift holidays was the Easter basket because I guess Jesus left baskets and <laughs> Christmas because Jesus and Santa co-conspired and said like, let's give the kids presents. I'm down with it. I get it. I mean, Easter, I can actually do without. Can't we like, have a little consumerism but around can't, here? Come yeah, on. Exactly. exactly. But like, can't we also just not? Can't we not? We can. Let's do it. Let's, well, that's, let's that's, make not buying shit cool again. Yeah. So this is the deal. So you're like, 
oh, this sounds like a good idea. I kind of like, I, I, I smell what the sisters are stepping in. You know Come what I'm on. saying? So this is the thing though, but you get caught up in seeing the stuff, you know, and then it's the keeping up with the Joneses and then it's that steady hum of anxiety. So this is where I say, we say, unfollow, turn it off. Oh, you mean the people who are pushing yes, the quit shit? Paying, don't pay, pay attention to other Things. You know, you make a really good point. And also, I do beg the question, what are we teaching our kids when all we're doing is buying shit? You know, I just feel like the the, the, the overbuying of, of the objects they already have, but just in 50 different colors, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It just is. I'll be the first to say it. Someone come holler at me. You know, I know things make kids happy, but there's also happiness and memories and experiences and not the accumulation of more shit. You know what, though? The things don't make you happy. And that is a fucking fact. And that's something that I try to tell people, my kids around here all the time. It's not the thing that actually isn't going to make you happy. That is exactly the last thing that's really going to make you happy. So seek out the things and the experiences in the moments. They don't listen to me half the time. They're in the, that's okay. they're land fillers, you know? I'm, they're oh, not. Actually, they're not. Will, they're, actually, really they're, they're not. not. William they went like, through is still phase. using his backpack from like preschool. <laughs> William is not. And Mia went through a phase in like that junior high period. It was like landfiller nation. And that's totally subsided 100%. But you know, it is like the lesson that you're trying to teach every day. Really, it is you can't take one of these goddamn things with you when they bury you or burn you up. So what's well, the point? I came across a TikToker who goes, it opened, I opened up my TikTok and she was, you don't need it. That was the first thing she said. She was, uh-huh. you don't need it. I think she, I and then, followed her and I lit, You must have surfed off. Cause then I was like, oh, okay. And she was, you don't need that fifth pair of jeans. You got four. You're good. Yeah. You don't need that other style of boots that you're in that same color, truth. maybe two or three other colors. You just don't need it. And she was, follow me. I will tell you all the shit you do not need. And oh I'm like, my God. Let's this get her is, on this the is podcast. my kind of gram. Let's yep. get her on the pod. My kind of folks. lady. It's my kind of lady. You don't need it. You don't mm-hmm. need it. I'll listen, you know, once in a while, I like a new something, but there's just a lot of shit we just don't need. Yep. All right. So, um, wow. boo to boo boxes. Yes to yeah, boo two experiences. Thumbs down to those. Yeah. Uh-huh. Two thumbs up um, and r- right, uh, listeners, tell us, are you a boo boxer? Are you an anti boo boxer? We want to hear from you. So, email us at contact at the sister project blog.com. And soon enough, friends, oh my God, OMG, Squirt City, our new website's going to be up oh and running. I would say in like a week's time. <sighs> I and can't. There's a little button. There's a button where you can press on it and you can leave us straight up comments, topics, all the things you're oh, thinking about when you're listening to I us. Can't wait I for cannot wait. To see it. We will accept love mail and hate mail. So bring it on. Oh, I want to be like, I've had, I've had a podcast where they read the horrible things that people say. <laughs> You're opening up to that, huh? We really have, well, I guess we haven't made it yet if we haven't gotten regular hate mail. Oh, that's out there, man. I bet it is. <laughs> All right. Reading, watching, listening to. Nothing new on the reading Same. docket, but watching. Yeah. All right, Michelle, Anthony and I, our new thing at night, we climb in the bed together <laughs> and we watch the Great British Baking Show together. And it is take away any stress and anxiety, True. feel good vibes only, funny. You get yep. attached to the bakers. It's if true. you are not watching the Great British Baking <sighs> Show, you sold me again. just do it. You will be inspired to bake more. You will be inspired by all the walks of life. These people, these people have regular everyday jobs. And some of them might be, a. I don't even think they can be a professional baker to be on the show. I think they have to almost be like, as a passion like hobby. Home baker chefs. Yeah, like I'm an accountant, but on my off time, I just whip up, you know, like three tier cakes. Now I so don't watch good. as much as you. Are they like, are they putting, are they like advanced though bakers? Like oh. where they're putting, are, oh, yes. or sometimes are you like this, how'd this guy get on the show? No, like, no, no. These people are, their hobby is legit. It's on fire. People are like, oh, I'm just baking, you know, I'm doing bagels every other day. Or there's like, there was an older guy from the Bronx or Brooklyn that married an English woman. So he lives in England and he bakes for his family. I mean, these people are making, okay. And let's talk, but now let's take this back. Let's take this back a second though, to what we were talking about before, because I think that this is so important. You know, these little hobbies in this situation, we're talking baking. Okay. This is these people's passion and their time spent 
um, doing things that they're creating. And it's like, if we could lean more into instead of the consuming and yes. the taking in what we're totally. watching, what people are getting, what people are buying and we what people are making. create and what we create and got and started to create. Eight. I so, think that that would negate so much consumption and totally. bring so much more joy and raise the level of good vibes. Well, when you're watching the show too, they do like little flashbacks to like the different bakers, like when they introduce them, like at home and you see them sitting around having a cup of tea with their loved ones, like sharing what they made for them. Or, you know, like when I'm, I'm when I'm not painting, it's all about like the slow living. Yeah, I love that. Enjoying delicious that. food. It is my favorite comp- competitive television show and they cry, they hug. It is, it gives me goosebumps. It's yeah. The you've really, show. you've really sold it. And I'm, I've been kind of we like cuddle. seeking for some, like seeking something. And this is kind of, it's, I feel like a warm bubble in my uh-huh. stomach based oh, on yeah. what you oh, just yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. So that's warm where bubble. I'm going with it. And Paul Hollywood, his magic blue eyes, he's just so cute and handsome. And he, they, they all like, they all weirdly like, and then one of the hosts, I forget his name, he is kind of like androgynous. And yeah, he's kind of yeah, like he goes a by rocker, queer. He's rocker so style. cool. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. so cool. And they all kind of like flirt with one of the bay. Everyone's there, there's a lot of subliminal messaging. They'll talk about like the size of something. <laughs> but there's <laughs> also like kindness. You oh, know? it's it's, the, it's literally that is the antis- that is the epitome of no, that's not the yeah, word. yeah. It's one the of those essence. words. The, the essence. essence. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, word. yeah. Totally. Kindness, kindness rules in that show. Actually, it's really sweet. Love that. Love that. You are watching SNL. I watched the the most recent episode with Ariana Grande was the host and Stevie Nicks. You guys, I, I love SNL. Here, fun fact. When I worked in my before times downtown, I had a friend, her name was, I have a friend, her name is, she was like my work sister. Her name is Michelle Power. Yeah, and you guys we, are still friends. We are still friends. I just <laughs> talked to her. She was just here in Chicago. I didn't see her, but I'm whatever. Anyway, we had a, we aspired to write for SNL. Like we had skits, we had pages and pages and pages of skits and we would write these ideas and some of them we kind of would create. And then as the years would go by, we'd be like, come in on Monday and be like, did you, did you see the skit that SNL did that we wrote that, but that we, it was big magic, basically what I'm saying. Like we came up with it, but so did somebody else. Oh. Anyway, anyway, so SNL, I love it. I've always loved it. And I'm like, screw it. So I turned it on. You guys, Ariana Grande, I'm kind of obsessed with her mimic. Have her, you ever like, seen her mimic other singers? No, but I she's, have. She's I've brilliant. Seen her. I, I, I like her. I'm, I'm kind of into her. She is a brilliant singer and mimic, and she is funny as hell. Like she is a comedian. She is. She's got these yeah, she's eyeballs. Funny. She her deadpan stares. I. If you are looking to laugh and just like kick back, can't find anything watch it. Stevie Nicks slays. Love her. It's just great. It was a great episode. Okay. Fabulous. Um, on to listening. I, okay. So the great bit of British baking show is like the, what I need really? to feel good after what I'm listening to. I, can't I am. Believe- well, are you my listening friend, to this in the woods? Like when you're walking? Yes. Well, let me tell you my friend, Greg, who turned hey, me on to hey Greg he turned me on to the pets like listening to Stephen King novels because and I've been you know I don't have as much time to read sometimes but I've got plenty of time to listen while I'm doing other shit so I'm like you know what and one of my favorite Stephen King's movies is um Pet Cemetery. I've watched it a billion times the first time I saw I was probably eight at my grandma's house she was busy I turned on like channel 50 and it was playing way too young to be watching it still oh nightmares my about Zelda if you know who Zelda is you know why it's nightmare material and let me just tell you the book is so good I have not read a lot of Stephen King so I don't really know don't what his one. writing is like and it is no wonder why he is like the king of horror because he is good at writing it and if you know the movie Pet Cemetery, the book is the movie did a great job um, adapting the book into a film, and I would give this high marks for spook factor, writing, storytelling. Judd, who is played by Herman Munster in the movie, oh, the yeah. big tall guy, he was yeah. the judge in My Cousin Vinny. Um, and oh, one other thing, Michael C. Hall, who is Dexter. He yeah. is the kid. He's the narrator. Oh, Let me make, no, he's the narrator of this. Let me make that right. Michael C. Hall is Dexter, right? I believe so. C. Hall, Dexter. Yeah, he is the narrator and he 
and that's not, that's actually why I press play because I like him. Like I, I love him as an actor and his voice. Phenomenal narrators change the they course do. of and an audio. Have, and I have to say something because I'm still reading My Dear Hamilton, yes. but I also downloaded it on Spotify because I was into this book and it's I rented it from the library and Libby's going to take it back before I finish it. So I've been also listening to it to kind of keep moving along with it. The narrator in that one, you know, when she goes, it's it's Eliza Hamilton's wife. It's being narrated by her. So it's a woman, okay? But then she does Hamilton's voice. And I'm like, where are you from? What accent? Why are you? So it's no, kind of ruining I, it. It's just annoying me. I'm it's like, annoying. She's like, Eliza. No, no, and I'm like, no. what is he, a decrepit old man? I thought they just had a couple of kids. <laughs> this is just not matching. Like, what's no. going on? Yeah, it takes a special the narrator matters. reader. Yeah, and so I highly, highly recommend it. It is so, I'm so locked in. That I'm, it's 14 hours. I've got, I'm at eight hours left. And it is my my 10K walk storytelling. Like I go after I, Anthony takes over in the evening, right? Like we do our flip flop and I'm like, see ya. And I go to the, I go to my local park, which is a lap and it's surrounded by trees. This yeah, is a, a beautiful great setting. spot to walk. It is. And I bust out 10 K while listening to Michael C. Hall. Hell yeah. And I'm about to get to the killer baby part. So we'll see what happens. Okay, cool. Happy Halloween. Have a good one. <laughs> That was like such like a Hubie Halloween moment. <laughs> Great movie, by the way, you guys. Classic. Uh, Michelle, on deck for you is Buy Back Your Time by Dan Martell. Yeah, can't, recommendation by my avid reader friend, Anna. And um, in a nutshell, guys, I don't know what this is about yet, except that it says right here, it's how you use your free time will make or break your success the secret and he's talking about how it's not working hard or it's finding more time to do work and i'm here for it so Amazing. i am going to learn and share with all of you okay cool Stay keep us posted tuned. and michelle finally and lastly what are you doing for your own cozy mindful well-being just commit to those 10k steps a day same mine's the same yeah that's the that's same so for me awesome. sister Sergi. you you really you inspired me because i get my i'll be like i'm going for a walk 10k and now it's a goal like now it's like i got and sometimes i do the 10k in one shot like that's yep. my you know what i'm saying and yesterday i clocked it in it took me 50 minutes and that was a it was a fast walk mm -hmm. like i'm oh, not no. like walking i'm like walking cruising i yeah, actually did pumping. a walk i was like when am i going to get this in and i didn't have a lot of time so i walked and i don't typically like to do this but i created some content on my walk oh, and sure, i a little walk was, time work time and i was breathing heavy and out of breath and considered stopping over by the scary hut just Which for house? a minute to see what was going on so I could, because I was like, this is a level two cardio, working and yeah. walking. And how long do you find that it takes you to get the 10K in? You know, I, I feel like if I go to the wood, if I go to the woods and back, that gets me about seven. That's about 45 minutes. Yeah, 45, something 50 like minutes. That. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I usually have like 2000. I feel like by the time I get to the woods, so I usually, I'm able to make it. Oh, but I've so also that. been better. I'm trying to get out even if it's for a walk around the block after i eat oh like a, a passeggiata like a yes. an italian like an yes. after meal walk. just get the blood pump in get the glucose I, I think I processed, butchered that, but yeah, whatever but th that's the idea mm -hmm. there's a family across the street it's an indian family and every evening they wrap up dinner you can tell it's time they've wrapped up dinner and they go for their and they go digest walk. their food and i love and i'm kind of on the walk with them sometimes theirs is a slower stroll but it's lovely it's a it's a Don't beautiful remember, family event do you yes. remember the middles down the yep. way they did the same they thing. They did the same exact thing. I love thing. it. It's a cultural thing that was not given to us. No, we go white from Americans were like eat and lay on the couch. couch. No. Mm -mm. And we like eat, play, you know, move your body. Yeah, move eat, move that body. body. Get that mm -hmm. food where it needs to get going. All right, you guys. Wow, Thank you I love so this conversation. Much. Same, same. A whole trick or treat mix of things. But boatload of inspiration, too. Yeah. yeah. I hope love you guys it. enjoyed today's episode. Listen. Do us a favor, leave us a review, okay? And share this episode with someone who yes, might relate please. to anything that we talked about. We are grassroots over here. You know, we don't have like a big PR agent pushing our shit for us. That's me and that's Michelle that do that job for us. And you as our listener, thank you for pressing play, but you play a small, big, not small, a gigantic role mm. in keeping this ball getting bigger because we're going to take over the podcasting world one day. 
Yeah, hell day. yeah. Here, and listen, I've and got a script for you. Either. No, no, we will not. No, we will no. not. Listen, I have a script for you. This what is, is what you need to say. Hey, 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 Susie. Hey, Tommy. Listen, I listen to these girls. They're freaking great. They make me laugh. I feel good. I think you might like it. S- click, copy, send. And that's Boom. it. And that is it. And then also this one other thing. Though. Oh, yeah. Stay cozy, listener. Ciao. Thank you for joining us for today's cozy conversation. For more of The Sister Project, check us out on Instagram at at the sister Proj and our website, www.thesisterprojectblog.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and maybe even drop us a review. Until next time, stay cozy. Stay cozy.